The ShopBot desktop is a gantry-style machine with a welded aluminum frame and precision ground steel rails that the gantry rides along. This is a solid, well-built machine, all metal, no plastic. With a CNC machine, rigidity is paramount for getting accurate cutting results. For example, you'll find some competitors' machines are made out of plastic, which can flex during the clamping process and affect the accuracy of your cut. In contrast, ShopBot simply did not cut any corners in this machine's design and construction, and it shows. Our version is equipped with an industrial spindle to drive the bit, and the spindle has an attending control box here on the side. You can also get a lower cost version of the desktop that comes with a router rather than a spindle. Now we could do an entire episode on router versus spindle, but in a nutshell, if you're a hobbyist on a budget, you'd probably go with the router, and if you're a designer looking to do production, you'd go with the more expensive spindle. If you want to know which one to choose depending on your specific application, we recommend you do a search in ShopBot's forums to figure out which is the right choice for you. The spindle's control box adds about 4 inches to the overall width of the machine. Now if you want to see if this entire thing will fit into your shop, the footprint of our model with the spindle is 39 inches wide, 32 inches deep, and 30 inches tall. Because the machine is driven by software, there's only a few physical interface components on it. The most obvious is this red cap power switch, which also doubles as the emergency kill switch. The second, for the spindle equipped machines, is the spindle's control box. It's got an on-off switch and a dial. You'll use this dial to set the speed of the bit before you run your cutting file. If you've got a router-based machine, obviously you'd set that on the router itself. And as far as where you set it, we'll get into how to determine appropriate speeds later on. Thirdly, there's this aluminum plate and an alligator clip. These two devices are used to zero the bit in the Z or up-down axis. Again, we'll get into how to do this once we get down to actual cutting. For dust collection, there's two kinds of enclosures that are included, this larger one that attaches by means of these pins, and this smaller one that just pops on and off via magnets. Which one you'll end up using depends on your application. I really like the design of the smaller dust foot, and I find the magnetic attachment system quick and convenient for doing bit changes. Speaking of dust collection, there's also an optional, larger, plastic enclosure, which is ideal if you're using your shop bot in a school environment, or if you just want to keep the dust around your area to a minimum. We found the enclosure invaluable, and we're going to give it its own video. In terms of hardware, the machine comes with a pair of wrenches to get the bits on and off. ShopBot also includes two collets, which are the things that hold the bits into place inside the spindle. They include two sizes, one for half-inch shanks, the other one for quarter-inch shanks. And yes, these collets will of course accommodate any router bits you might already own. And speaking of bits, ShopBot offers an optional set of seven starter bits that we'd recommend. They cover the most common cutting operations and are manufactured by Onsrud, a company with almost 70 years in the tooling business. In the next video, we'll look at how to set the machine up.